Welcome to today's episode of 219 Green Connect, where we explore topics about the environment and green living in Northwest Indiana. For past show archives, news, and upcoming events, you can check out our website at 219greenconnect.com or join us on Facebook or Twitter. Our ID on both Facebook and Twitter is 219 Green Connect. You can also subscribe to our podcast via iTunes. I'm your host, Kathy Sippel, and I want to say that today's show is made possible by My Social Media Coach, providers of social media coaching and training for small business and nonprofit organizations. You can find out more at www mysocialmediacoach.com. With me today, I have as my guest, Rich Fralazzo, and I met Rich up at the Sawgrass Marketplace two weekends ago and was just astounded to find that besides Sawgrass Marketplace's regular offerings that I've come to rely on of locally uh, raised duck eggs, chicken eggs, uh, chicken, all kinds of other great things, they are now offering locally raised shrimp. And Rich is the guy behind the Valparaiso Shrimp Company. And so I wanted to invite him here today to tell a little bit about his business and how can we, a landlocked, or not landlocked, but non-saltwater um, access Midwest state, have shrimp grown locally. So thanks so much, Rich, for joining me. And, and let's let's talk a little bit about your business and how you got into it. Okay, well, thank you, Kathy, for having me on. Uh, our company is located in Valparaiso, and I got involved with raising saltwater shrimp with a gentleman who was, oh, doing koi and ornamental fish. And that was a seasonal thing, and he decided to retrofit everything to salt water. And our salt water is uh, clear. It's a clear water system, and it's recirculated salt water. And it's monitored 24 hours a day. We actually have one of us even sleeping there. So if anything goes wrong, we're right there to, to, to raise it. Um, our, our product is, uh, as I said, fresh salt water shrimp, not farm-raised. And the flavor is totally different than if it was farm-raised. We produce a, a superior quality, all-natural shrimp without using any pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics, hormones, Nothing. It's all natural. And we sell to both the retail and the wholesale market. And our shrimp taste, oh, there's a delicate, meaty flavor to them. You've never tasted anything like, like our shrimp. And you can get them in different sizes, small, medium, or, or the large size. Uh, we, uh, we feed our shrimp a high-protein uh, food, fiber, all natural with uh, bioactive compounds and vitamins and minerals. Uh, as I said, there is no no chemicals, no hormones, uh, nothing. It's all all natural. And I think uh, uh, Kathy has tasted it. And I think yeah. she can tell you that's <laughs> I have. pretty darn I'll, good. <laughs> I'll give a spontaneous uh, testimonial. I you know I didn't go to Sawgrass Marketplace intending to buy shrimp, but it was just too interesting to pass up. So. Two weekends ago, I brought I bought my first pound, and partly just rich based on our conversation, it was, you know, my curiosity was piqued. And you you were really right. You said it tastes a little bit more like lobster than shrimp. It was right. very very tender, um, more subtle, less less fishy, I think, than traditional shrimp. And the thing that came into my mind too was just it tasted really. Um, Tender. Can't remember if I, ever, if I said that already. Just really, really tender and clean was the word that kept coming into my mind. I never thought of shrimp as tasting dirty or gritty, but it just, yeah, it was a really interesting and amazing experience. So I was back the next week. <laughs> All good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you know, we're um, getting, yeah, we're getting the word out. Mm-hmm. And I know it's uh, kind of unusual here. You're, as, you, as you mentioned in the introduction, we're in northwest Indiana. You can get fresh, basically fresh ocean shrimp here in Indiana, right here in northwest Indiana. Take me and, through the uh, process of how, how that happens, because you said they're not exactly considered farm-raised, but, you know, obviously right. salt water isn't native here. So how do how do you actually get the shrimp from you know, wherever okay. they originate to, you know, to Sawgrass Marketplace or wherever else you gotcha. wholesale. 
Well, we get we get the uh, uh, the larva or the, the the small little little guys from a, a hatchery in Florida uh, when they're 11 days old, and then they're shipped up here and they stay in our nursery tanks for about 28 days, and then we move them to our bigger tanks for growth. We want to get them acclimated to to our water, to the salt water. And um, uh, then they're ready for harvesting in, oh, I would say 90 to 110 days, depending on the size that our, our guests or our customers require. And the salt are, itself is the same bags of sea salt that the Shedd Aquarium uses. And it's, uh, uh, as I said, it's recirculated, it's monitored, and it's, uh, it's close to the ocean that you can get. And um, our survival rate is, oh, gosh, almost 95%. And these, these little guys, uh, they jump. Uh, they jump out of the water. So that's why we have to have uh, nettings because uh, they're so healthy that uh, they just want to exercise and jump and play around. And so that's, that's how we know that they're healthy. Okay. And everything, that's, everything is just, just perfect for them. Uh, my partner, my partner Bob, is there all the time, and so is Lori, our office manager. And so there's always somebody there to make sure that uh, they're fed correctly. Uh, and uh, uh, each growth cycle, they're fed a little bit differently, so that we uh, and we have a computer printout to make sure that everything is is running, running great. Great, and I should say too, if anybody wants to take a look at photos of your facility, they are available on your website, which is www.finsllc.com. Right. And right, and also, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, that's okay. What I'm, what I'm seeing there is, <laughs> is just kind of a, it looks like a very high-tech, uh, you know, system of tubs, and you can also mm-hmm. tell that the shrimp are not crowded together. I mean, it looks like they've got, you know, what looks, I, I'm no expert, of course, but it looks like they've got a lot of room you know, to move around and not not what I've seen as far as typical, you know, like fish farming or aquaculture situation. Right. Well, our, our shrimp, there's uh, several big, I guess for lack of a better word, tanks that we use, and each tank has the, the growth cycle of the shrimp. So uh, when they're ready to be moved to another one, to this next uh, tank, uh, we do that. But there's a whole series of pumps, and um, uh, as I said, it's going all the time, and we're right there. And uh, it's not like, you know, the the farm raised that we get. You know, we get most of the shrimp here from Southeast Asia, from these farms where they're all just, you know, bunched together, and they ship them out like a factory. Um, and who knows exactly what they're fed out there. But anyway, um our shrimp, as you just said, have lots of room to to move and grow and uh, and prosper, and that's what our goal is. And we want to give the best product to to our customers. And then the water quality, obviously, you know, you mentioned. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus with their water quality, but there are countries that definitely don't have the type of environmental regulation, you know, that we even do here. But this right. takes it further where you've got it in a much more, you know, controlled, you know, controlled um, situation. Right. So I would imagine that would be a big health benefit as well. I mean, who who do you feel are most attracted to purchasing your product? Are there people that are concerned about, you know, eating healthier or is it the taste or some combination? I think it's a combination of both because this is the way – that food is supposed to taste. It's not supposed to taste like uh, you go to the grocery store and you look through the glass and you can tell that this stuff is, you know, frozen, pre-frozen, unfrozen. There's no texture, no taste to them. Uh, but this is this is this is fresh, and this is this is why our friends at the Sawgrass Market too, with their green, uh, uh, you know, the grass-fed beef. Uh, if you've ever tried that, that it's, oh yeah, it's phenomenal. You yeah. know, it's it's yeah. Our, our our food is a combination. I think people want to eat healthy, but don't want to have the chemicals in their body, and people who are concerned about the environment too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if I may just say, uh, you know, like the uh, two years ago with that spill uh, with BP, 
it wasn't so much the oil, it was the chemicals that were used, and it's been proven by scientists now that, that those chemicals are in the food chain down there. Right, you're talking and, about the uh, Gulf, Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, the Gulf oil. Yeah, the Gulf oil spill. And I don't think that, you know, people who are concerned about eating healthy, I think they they want uh, foods that don't have any any chemicals or, or growth hormones or genetically engineered compounds in their food. Um, so I think that's a combination of, okay. uh, of people who want to use us. And so are you working um, with any local restaurants that, that carry your, your product? Yes. Yes. In Valparaiso, the, the Valley restaurant is using us. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we're getting very, very close to the William B. Steakhouse at the Blue Chip Casino. Great. Uh, yes, and that would be great. Uh, the Sage restaurant here in Chesterton. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of work with, uh, with uh, several restaurants here. And... Um, uh, the feedback that I get from the customers is that it's a superior product. And they just, you know, they just, they just love it. Um, the one thing I just wanted to add, I don't know if your listeners know um, uh, this genetically engineered uh, salmon and tilapia that uh, the FDA is getting ready to approve. Uh, Trader, Trader Joe's and Whole Foods not even waiting for the FDA to get it approved. They're, they're not, they're not going to carry it in their stores. Mm-hmm. Good for them. And I think that is, yeah, I think that is a really good thing. I think mm-hmm. the public is getting more conscious of uh, of really good, good tasting natural foods. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I think we're the only country. I I don't want to overspeak beyond you know my knowledge level, but just from watching you know several documentaries, I think Food Inc. was one of them. There were there have been several others, but it seems like the U.S. is one of the few, if not the only country that doesn't isn't required, you know, to label genetically modified food. So it, it really right. does fall to the consumer to do quite a bit more of the legwork and to, you know, delve in to understand well, not even labeling genetically modified, just allowing it in general. I mean most countries mm-hmm. don't even you know, don't even allow it. But for us we need to, you know, learn how to interpret stickers on produce or you know, just self-educate. Otherwise, I think getting to know your local providers and taking a tour, having these kind of talks, you know, learning about where does your food actually come from, what are the conditions, is the best and the safest. Because I agree. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Besides growing just, it in your own basement. <laughs> you know. right. Yeah. Now, if people want to, if people want to see the facility, they're welcome to see it. Uh, um, we're at, we're in Valparaiso. Can I give you the address? Sure. Or is that... yeah. Do you do you have okay. tours or what what are your hours right, right. of operation? No, if, you contact, if you contact me or Lori, and I'll give you both phone numbers. Great. If you can give us a little heads up, we'd be happy to, you know, have people come in and and Great. see the 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 jumping shrimp. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, definitely like uh, that. Um, okay. Well, the address is three fifteen East, three sixteen North. Unit C in Valparaiso. It's real easy to find. If uh, listeners are familiar with uh, going toward Laporte on 2 East, they'll come to Samuelson's Nursery, and right over the railroad tracks you take a left, and there's a big uh, industrial company called PTT Power. And you just uh, go to the next, go to the first street, take a right, and then take the immediate left and right in those buildings. It's real easy to find. So it's, it's 325 and, uh, East, that's County Road 325 East, and that's in Washington Township in, in Valpo. Right, okay. right, right. It's just take 2 East out of Valpo, and it's real easy to find. Now, I'll give you my phone number. It's uh, 219-746-6673. You can call any time. And then the office phone number is 219-299-2445. And uh, Lori will answer that phone too. Okay. And do and, you sell uh, product out of your store, or do you? Yes, we do. You do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All you have to do. We we don't sell it every day because they're not ready every day. But you'll see a flag or okay. a shrimp sign right on the corner, and then you know that we're ready to sell that day. Do but you we're not going to sell unless perhaps. Yeah. Do you have any place on your website that kind of lets people know about availability, or is it you would just suggest calling 
calling. For? I would just suggest give it, yeah, give us a call first, or if you see okay. the flag up and you're out that way, just pull right in, and we'll be happy to okay. uh, to to, uh, to sell them to you. Now, we're also, if I may add, uh, we'll be at the Chesterton European Market Great. starting May fourth. Okay. And we'll be we'll be uh, uh, having a shrimp for sampling with a little cocktail sauce. Good. And then we'll be uh, offering the one-pound bags for sale right there, and I think that's really great for people, especially during the summertime coming from Chicago, maybe going up to Michigan. They want to take, a, you know, take a couple of pounds with them for a barbecue. Uh, we'll have that for you, and um, we'll have some recipes and how to cook them, and it's it's uh, it's a good thing. I think it's good for everybody here. We'll be right next to our friends at the. Uh, at the sawgrass market there too, so we're going to have both our organic and natural foods yeah. available for everybody. Let's just give the sawgrass marketplace a shout out too, because it, if you're not looking for it, I don't think it's entirely obvious that it's there. <laughs> They're exactly. up in yeah, exactly. Chesterton. Um, Chesterton's kind of done some branding with uh, the entry to the south part of their you know business area, and I'm thinking, is that 1050 County Road 1050 North? Off of 49. Yeah, it's right next. If people are familiar with with Chesterton, it's right by the uh, the round the clock restaurant. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And you just go past there, right. going toward downtown, and you'll see Sawgrass Market, and you'll see a sign that says "Grass Fed Beef." And uh, last last weekend, we even had a flag up saying "Shrimp for Sale" too. Right. So yep. you can't I miss either one of those. If you're looking <laughs> for it, you can't miss it. But I I just don't think you'd right. be. A- expecting, you know, to look for it. So if if you're heading north right. on Calumet, it's going to be on the east side of the street. And yes. I'll put in a plug, too, uh, there's, if you're making the trip, you can make this a whole local food destination. There's a new nano brewery that opened just south of your location That's right. called Hunter's Brewing. That's and right. And my husband and I checked that out after we saw you on Saturday. And that that's kind of neat. That's also not necessarily one that pops out at you <laughs> if you're not looking for it. It's very, right. very small. But it's on the same side of the street. And um, Sawgrass Marketplace, they also have a cafe. I think it, it was mm-hmm. called Local Flavors. I think they rebranded as Tiger Lily, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and, it's called uh, Tiger Lily, and they have uh, paninis and fresh salads. They even have a, a garden inside. Uh, um, um, I'm not familiar. Is it a hydro? Hydroponic, uh, aquaponic. The, the hydroponic, right. Okay. They're growing, they're growing uh, lettuce and herbs right inside under lights, and it's really they're using that in their foods, and it's uh, very, very tasty. Very, I, very, very The good. owner's name is uh, Marilyn Bush, and she's really got a commitment right. to offering a, a wide selection of vegetarian and vegan options, but um, also just local local food connections. Right. So. It's, yeah, I it's had the neat, I had the vegan I had the vegan gyro on Saturday. Boy, was that good! Was that good? <laughs> wow, yeah, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I picked up a few items. We're we're not vegan. Obviously, I'm talking to you about buying your shrimp, but you know, right. we, we've just mm-hmm. made a an effort uh, or a decision to be much more conscious about where the food comes from, and you know, reducing our our carbon footprint by buying local and by supporting people that that raise. You know that raise the protein in a healthy, sustainable mm-hmm. way, and just eating less of it. It is, you know, I'll give you a little warning. We're not going to announce prices here because that might be subject to change. It is more. It's more than what you'd expect to pay if you go into, you know, a grocery store. But it's it's just right. night and day. So I would suggest, you know, have it, have it less frequently, but have the good stuff. It's you you are not going to want to go back. <laughs> Right, and also, of course, when you're raising it, uh, we are saltwater shrimp here. There's uh, there's no transportation cost either associated with getting the stuff up from the, you know, from the Gulf or getting it from overseas. I mean, right, uh, right. So you got a lower right. lower carbon footprint. Um, do you have plan? Like, what is your capacity? Would you say are you at capacity right now or? Well, no, we're not at capacity right now. We're kind of gearing up for the, uh, the European market because I think that's going to be big. But we have the capacity to to offer uh, approximately 250 to 300 pounds of shrimp a week Okay. right now. So we would love to sell 250, 300 pounds of shrimp okay. a week and uh, and then we move into a bigger facility. Mm-hmm. So that would be great. And, then, and if we know that, then we know that people are really enjoying it and they're really liking the shrimp and, you know, we're – uh, we're in it to uh, um, not 
you know, not so much. To, um, it's kind of a, um, oh, what do I want to say? Uh, not in it to make a whole ton of money, okay? We're in it so people have a little conscious about what's going on, about what we can offer to people. And uh, um, so that's, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe we will be at the Sawgrass Market this weekend, too, even though it's Easter weekend. If people wanted to call and you know, place an order or you know, have a little sample, we should we should be there both both days, Friday and Saturday. Okay, good. And, and you do uh, not have a, a Facebook page, is that right? I'm sorry. Do you don't. have a presence on Facebook, or I just wanted to give a little shout out if no, we're, we're, we are we're out. We're, thank you for for saying that, Kathy. We're in the process of getting a getting there. Okay. Facebook. Going. We don't have it quite yet. Uh, well, in, but, the mean, uh, in, in the, the meantime, site. you can find uh, information about Sawgrass Marketplace if if you want to check that out. They are on Facebook under Sawgrass Marketplace, so that'll give you some contact info Great. there. They've got hours of operation, and then we've already given out the info for um, you know your address and your phone number. Let's let's just give the website one more time. Do you want to go ahead and say it? Sure. The website is of course www.fins. Uh, I believe it's just fins.com, but you can have fins and then go uh, Valpo Shrimp. Okay, uh, I dot com actually. Way, so. Okay, I'm on there right now and I see finsllc.com, so it, you may you right. may have multiple domains. That, that's for sure, but I know that one works. Finsllc.com. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Sorry, I didn't want to put you on the spot there, but uh, yeah. No, I no that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. So can people pre-order? Is there a way to kind of reserve sure. order if you want a guarantee for a special party or something? Oh, of course, of course. Okay. Uh, we can uh, pre-order and I can get it in. And if people live in this area, whether it be Valpo or Chester, I'd be happy even to deliver it to somebody's house. That's okay. no problem at all. Well, there and uh, uh, starting with the European market, and I think even before that we're going to, we're, we're uh, looking at uh, shipping. Okay. Uh, the shrimp also, and I think that'll be a, a big boost too. Just want to make sure that we're going to be packaging it and shipping it the the correct way, so the freshness is uh, right is there once you get it to your house. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, well, so it sounds like a good idea though. To, that. <laughs> yeah, to kind of grow it in a sustainable sustainable way. Exactly. And sure. Right. Sure. You know, if your goal is right now 250 pounds or whatever you had just uh, was that the number 250 to 300 a week pounds. Right. Pounds. Right. Okay. And uh, um, you know, it's uh, I think it's a great it's a great concept. It's a great uh, uh, food for anybody who loves who loves seafood. Mm-hmm. Once you try it, you're gonna love it. <laughs> I think I might have so. mentioned this to you as well um, that I I saved the you know, the shells and boil them down to make um, just like a shrimp, uh, what would you call it, like a broth. And I, I right. freeze that and add it to, you know, if I make chowder or I make some other kind of soup that goes well. Mm-hmm. Or even just for right. um, for cooking other fish later. It's kind mm-hmm. of a good way to, uh, boy, I can't even think of the word, not broil. <laughs> All right. And I, it's really I can good. Cook yeah, I just don't know the words to describe it. But in any case, it, it had a lot of flavor. It really had a, a lot of flavor. And I would suggest, you know, using those shells to further extend the value, you know, that you get. And you mentioned it's great for compost. I was just going to ask to say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you mix it in with your, uh, you know, with your rototiller as you compost. And, uh, and I remember my, uh, uh, my father-in-law during the Depression, he would have the fish parts that wouldn't be used and they put it in the garden and the corn would grow to like uh, 24 feet high. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> it was wow. really, really good for the garden. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I do not have a very big space uh, at, at home to, to compost. I do some worm composting and that I don't think I can give to, to the worms. But, um, yeah, if you've got the space, sure sure would like to try that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yeah, you should. Well, let me just ask you, we've got about five five minutes left or so. I, I'm just really curious about your personal story. How did you get into this particular kind of business, or how did you know how did this all come together for you? Well, I've always I've always had my own my own garden. I live out in the country, and I met the gentleman Bob, who's uh, uh, kind of like the engineer here 
uh, with our with our product. Uh, I have a pond in the back of my property where I have koi, ornamental fish, lilies, lotus, and I started buying fish from him. And so we started talking about this about a year ago, and the ornamental fish is a, a seasonal thing. And he wanted to try something and read about uh, a company that was doing this, uh, the shrimp business. And since the infrastructure was already there, it was just a matter of retrofitting mm-hmm. everything to salt water. And so we got together and, oh, spent uh, spent a few nights <laughs> retrofitting everything. And then we got our first uh, uh, bunch of little guys in. And I'll be honest with you, we didn't do it right the first time, but the second time we did. And we started raising them. And so I've, you know, I've always... Uh, Oh, when I was living in Wisconsin, I worked in a uh, food co-op for a while, so I've always been okay. interested and involved in in natural foods. Interesting. And so that's yeah. So I'm just uh, uh, one of those who uh, kind of doesn't go with the go with the flow. Okay. 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 Well, great. And speaking of a uh, local food co-op, um, there is a woman, Janelle Highland, who is behind organizing a local organic food co-op, and I've inter- interviewed her on a previous podcast. So okay. once we have this link ready, I will definitely share it with her group, and I can see Great. how they, they might be interested. Uh, but, yeah, so that that's really interesting. I just kind of like to hear what are people's backstories. Um, you know, green living, that's not a really very scientific term. Sustainability is probably better. But no. you know, some well, I used to work in the, I used to work in the rest, I used to work in the restaurant business too, and I okay. saw what what goes on in there. So <laughs> okay, so kind of a quality, kind of liking food, yeah, lack of, also health, yeah, lack of quality, how you know foods are handled, and how what what's in the ingredients in some of the foods, and so uh, you know, I got out of that business, and okay. so now I'll try something else. Yeah, well, you know, certainly cover a lot of different topics on this podcast, but food to me seems like a decision that each household makes, each individual makes every single day. So, you know, it just seems like a good place where everybody can start to make some, you know, some small changes by supporting local, and it, you know, it supports your own natural health as well. So, I, I think it's an interesting way to to get started. And your facility, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, is one of only nine privately owned indoor recirculation saltwater systems in the U.S.? In the whole country, right. In the whole country. We're one of nine, okay. right, in the whole country, right. And uh, uh, it's clear. It's a clear water system, and it's recirculated salt water. And, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, as you said, it's nine. I, you know what, I think one more started out in Maryland, so I mean, okay. I think there's 10 right now, ten. but uh, we're the only one around here, and um, something like this, getting the word out, I think people, I think their interest will be uh, up there, and we'll be happy to answer any questions for them, and Good. offer them the shrimp, and from there, just keep on going. Good. Well, I really appreciate <laughs> you joining me today. I thought it was interesting, and I suspect that, you know, other listeners think this is as well. So we're nearly out of time for today, but if you're just joining us, uh, you've been listening to another episode of 219 Green Connect. I'm your host, Kathy Sippel, and with me today I've had Rich Ferlazzo from the Valparaiso Shrimp Company, and we're talking about uh, their shrimp that they raise right here in Valparaiso, their high-quality fresh saltwater shrimp, and uh, you can get more information about how to purchase from them by going to their website, www.finsllc.com. Or you can visit them up at Sawgrass Marketplace uh, in Chesterton, or they'll be at the European Market in Chesterton beginning May 4th. So that's a lot of fun if you've not checked out the European Market before. A lot of local vendors. So thanks once again, Rich, and hope to hear progress and hope you get to capacity very soon. Thank you very much for having me, Kathy. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye now.